What is up guys? In today's video we're going to be talking about adding graphics in iMovie. I will be going over the basics of how to add graphics and edit graphics inside iMovie and stay tuned because at the end I will show you guys how to use green screen for iMovie as well with your graphics. As always slow it down I know it takes a little bit more to understand it at times depending on what we're talking about and if you guys want me to do more tutorials on anything inside iMovie as always leave a comment down below I'm happy to answer any of those questions either right there in the comment section or in videos like I'm doing today. Now with that let's jump right in. So first off, what I want you to do is go ahead and open iMovie. We have a couple slides right here. So first off, what I want to do is let's talk about putting photos together. Now, if you haven't seen my other video, I'll go ahead and tag it below. But all of the basic settings, I'm not going to go over too much today. We're only talking about graphics. So if you have any questions about the general editing settings, go ahead and check out that video. I'll link it up up here. Now, first, let's talk about, like I said, adding those photos together like a photo slideshow. So let's say, for example, if I have this over here, Let's go over all the settings that are included for specifically photo settings when you're not dealing with video and only dealing with photos. First thing I want you to check out over here is the color palette and that is this guy over here. And iMovie calls this color correction and this is what we're gonna use to change any sort of the coloring that we need to for our images. Now this right slider over here in the corner that is gonna be our color temperature. As you can see, when I move this over to the right, the image is gonna get warmer like a yellow tint if I move this over to the left, it's going to get cooler like a blue or a white tint. Now the middle slider over here is going to be the saturation. That's how much color goes into the specific image. So over here, if you drag it to the right, the colors are going to get more bold. And then over here, if you drag it to the left, it's going to lose all of its color and go to more of a black and white kind of setting. Now this left slider right here, that's gonna be all the different settings for contrast and brightness between the different sections of our image. So over here, if you hover over this one, you have the adjusting the shadows. So these are the darker areas in the image, specifically on our bottom section. So if you drag this over to the right, you're gonna see our image kind of wash out. If you drag it over to the left, you're gonna see this image get more dark. So those are what the shadows are. Now over here in this left section, you can do the same thing with the, uh, the mid-tones and the shadows here. You can play around with what those look like, as well as the brightness settings. And you have the highlights. So the top end, you can make those highlights super bright or super dark. And for me, I'm just gonna reset this so that you guys know the general settings because I'm totally happy with how it looks already. Now this half circle, going on to the other settings, this is going to be your color balance. You can do auto and auto, basically this is just like doing the settings on your phone when you tap on that little auto icon. So it's gonna do everything for you. That's not generally a good idea because it doesn't know exactly what you're going for but it's a good start if you wanna go for it. You can also match the color, so if you match the color, this will be one slide to the next slide. So for example, if you have a specific area, you can match that with the little eyedropper, and you'll see the setting change. Now this setting is a slider, you can change that to off and on, but we're already good there. And then you can also do the white balance. This is going to make sure you get the exact white, so for this five minute countdown slide, if I tap inside there, you'll see it auto adjust the color for the white and the white balance. And then you have skin tone balance. So let's say for example, if you have uh, various skin tones, of course we all have different skin colors. You can auto check that with your skin color here. For example, if I have one of those softer yellows, it'll switch that to more of a cool tone as well. So you can do that both for the whites and for the different skin tones. Now over here, this box is going to be your crop settings. And this is kind of where we're gonna live for a little bit as well. There's a few simple settings that we can do. We have the fit and fit is going to basically just expand your image to fill the whole screen. You also have the crop to fill. If you hit this button, now mine already has the settings, so we don't have to worry about that, but crop to fill means it's gonna keep the proportions or the dimensions of the photo and it'll fill up your screen so that way it doesn't distort. So if you tried to do fit, it might get all wonky and weird, whereas crop to fill, it'll expand that, keeping the same dimensions. And then Ken Burns, this is more of a slideshow effect. Think of it more as a visual effect. Basically what this does is it's gonna auto zoom or auto move your photo, so that way it's not a still picture and it'll actually make it move across the screen. So if we do this one, for example, and we hit the check mark, if we hit the play, you're gonna see it zooms in like that effect. Now, since we don't wanna do that one, we'll just hit reset. And over here we have a couple more. You can actually flip your image just like you do on the phone. So that'll flip it around all the different directions and any way that you want to. 
Now when you're all set and done with that, you can either hit the blue check mark to say that it's done, or you can hit the reset if you don't like it and you want to restart. You can also have a reset button there. And over here you have those three little dots. Now if you hit those, those are going to be your different effects. So for your specific clip, you can have these settings here and change the coloring with filters. And if you have some audio attached to this clip, this is where you can do that too. Obviously, since we don't have any audio, we won't have any effects there. Now for the filter strength too, you can blend this in with the original and the effect. So for example, if we have this vintage effect going on, that's 100%. If we want to dial it back, if it's too much, we can actually blend these two together. So if you have like that 40%, then you have that nice little blend of discoloration and the original. Now down here in the timeline, your photos are going to be the same as if it was an actual video clip. So as you can see here, if we drag it on the left side, on the right side, you'll be able to change all of those settings as well. Also, if you want to clip it, so hit Command B, you can also separate the two parts right there. Everything that you can do with the video, you can do with these photos as well. And also on top of that too, you can bring in another image for example, and you can layer it on the top like so. And same thing here, you can chop up and do whatever and layer those on top of each other. Now the other thing that's really cool is since this is interacting just like video, wherever you see these little breaks, you can also add transitions too. So not only are you able to edit them like videos, you can add transitions between your photos as well. For example, I'll just go over here to transitions. And if I want to do like a simple slide left to right, I'm just gonna add that right in the middle there. If we push play, you can see it slides into the next one. Now that covers slideshows, but what if we're gonna add it on top of a video? Well, you have a whole nother set of settings to work with. So over here, if we go back to the media, we're just gonna get rid of that and start fresh. Let's say we have this basic timer, for example, five minute timer. Now, like I said, everything works the exact same way as a video, so just follow along with me here. First, you'll go ahead and select the image. So since we have our countdown down here, for example, if I wanted to drag in this image, I'll extend it to five seconds. Now, you have this bottom layer, that's the video, and then you have the layer on top as well. So let's go ahead and check out what settings we have. If we go ahead and click on this, you're gonna see all these options open up. Now those options are only going to be settings for what you have selected. For example, if you select on your bottom clip, all of these settings will now be only for the bottom clip. If you select this one, it'll only be the settings for this one. Now, if you have opacity, that just means how much of the image you're gonna blend in to the video. For example here, if I have this opacity at 100%, that means it's gonna be fully on top. Now look at what happens if I slide this back. If I slide this back, you can see it kind of fades away. That's what we call opacity. Opacity is just how much of the image we wanna show. Now cut away, this is the setting that we're on right now. This just means it's gonna start with the background video. Once it hits our picture on top, it's going to transition to this picture while the video plays in the background. And then when this clip stops, it'll go right back to the video. So for example, if we start it right here, you'll see that into effect. So we'll have the timer and then boom, it'll go direct cut to our image and then it'll cut right back. Now over here you see fade. Fade is going to be how long it takes for this image to go in and to come out as well on both sides, so at the beginning and at the end. So if we go ahead and hit fade, I'm just gonna go ahead and do 0.2 seconds, so that way it's a little faster. Keep in note too, over here, these are gonna be our save settings. So you're gonna reset back to the beginning or gonna hit the check mark to be done. So I'll hit the check mark since I'm ready now, and we'll see how much that goes for the fade. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then watch, it'll fade out now. And there you have it. So that way it's not a direct cut. Now it'll just transition in with a fade. Now, if you go ahead and click on it again, you're gonna notice that the settings don't appear. That's totally fine. There's two ways to get back to it. You can double click and it'll show up that way. Another way to do it is if it's not showing up, for example, if you hit the check mark and you're done, doesn't come back. You can also hit this square button up here and these will be where your settings are activated. So now let's go into another setting here. If you go ahead and click this top button, you have a couple more settings. Let's go down to the bottom one, picture in picture. Now when you use this setting, you're gonna be able to layer this image over the video that you use. Now here's the cool part. If you click and hold this, you're gonna be able to move it anywhere on the screen now. And if you grab any of these corners, you're gonna be able to resize it as well. So if you want the image to be this large, you can keep it that large 
or you could shrink it down to a smaller size and put it down in the corner like this. So now this specific setting, it has more settings inside. So if we go over here, this is going to be how it comes into the video. So right now it's going to be at a dissolve. That's just like the one that we had before where it just kind of slowly appears. You also have zoom and then you also have swap where it kind of just switches out. See that? So for now, let's just go ahead and pick the zoom one. And once again, I'm going to do my 0.2 seconds because it goes fairly quickly. And let's see what that looks like now. So instead of coming through the whole thing, now you're going to see that it just shows up real quickly there and then it'll go away at the end. Like I said, if you want that to be faster or slower, you have this transition here. So if we do like a 0.1, it'll go in twice as fast because now it's 0.1 seconds to show up. All right, and then over here, you also have the border too. If you have those dotted lines, that means there's gonna be no border. And then you could have a small border here, and then you could have a thick border here. Now, if you notice here on the no border, it's just gonna have this grayed out X. If you go ahead and switch it to a border like so, you can actually change the color of the border too. So it's gonna bring up this color wheel here. And if you have this, you can actually change it to any color. If you want to, you can use the eyedropper real quickly. For example, if we wanted a green border, you can check it out there. So now you have this green border. If you go ahead and click on check, you now have that entire thing going right there for you. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and reset this. What I wanna do here is I'm gonna go back to picture in picture. Let's just do the zoom with 0.1. And no border. And if you hit shadow, shadow is gonna pop out on the image a little bit clearer for you it more in the forefront so if you do want a simple shadow you can't change it too much actually at all but it will add a little bit of a shadow for you to separate from the background image so now that I have that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it to the bottom corner and typically you can do this you know of course any which way you want to but for our specific purposes here it's just a simple logo so it'll just go down there in the corner now if we push play here's our final product and there you have it. Now the other super cool thing to do here is if you have two different things going on at the same time, for example, if you're doing reaction videos with a buddy or anything where you wanna see two screens at the same time, what you can do here is we're gonna go through and we're gonna to go to split screen. This is gonna switch the images to be two screens at the same time. So you have this top layer over here, that's gonna be our five minute countdown. Of course, this is gonna be a bad example for this because you can't really resize it too well. And then you have the bottom screen here, which will be the right side. Now, if you wanna switch these, you can go over to position, you can switch them to the left, right, top, bottom. If you wanna go ahead and do up and down, I would hit top. And then there you go, you split it over a little bit better. Like I said, my sizings are a little bit off for this specific image, but that'll be able to get you through what split screen is. Now for this slide, this slide is going to be switching how fast it goes for the split screen compared to the original one. For example, if I go through it and select, we'll do, let's do 0.2, make it a little bit slower this time. And let's see what that looks like now. So if we push play, you'll see it slowly comes through and it does split screen. Now, for example, if we come in side to side, let's hit the left side. And here's what that one looks like. And there you have it. Now this also does both sides, so if I come over here to the end, it'll also slide right back out. And that's how you do the split screen. Now the other cool thing is going to be green screen. So let's check out that one, like I promised. Now I did cover this more in the other video. Like I said, if you wanna watch that one, go check that one out, because that'll be specific applications. This will be the settings to get there. Now here's the general problem with the green screen. If, for example, you're gonna go to the end, and you want this to be the bottom layer. It's not gonna work. If you place this down, for example, if we have a green screen timer like this one, if you notice it's gonna act as the bottom layer, you're not gonna be able to do anything with it. It's just there, that's what it is. If you wanna specifically do a green screen, what you would wanna do is you'd wanna put down the background layer first on the bottom. I just have the simple black image. And then what you wanna do is you wanna put that green layer on the top of it. Now, what happens here? 
If you hit on this, you're going to see you have the same settings as our images. So instead of cutaway or split screen picture in picture, we're going to hit green blue screen. Watch what happens. It's going to get rid of that specific green square. Now softness is going to be how hard it works to get rid of the green. You can also clean up with this different settings here with the eraser and then the box setting. I'm going to just hit the check mark there. As you can see now, instead of the green, it shows up green on your layer, but on the bottom here, it's going to cut out the green to where only the background layer shows. Now whatever is not green is what's going to show up on the video. Now unfortunately this is limited to two layers so you can't really put like a third layer on top of the green like this. As you can see it's going to cut off there. So unfortunately you can only do the two at a time. And as you can see here if I try to bring down my image, my image is going to chunk there in the middle and it's not going to look the best. So for now you are kind of limited to the two layers but I've never had a problem with this. Keep in mind it is a free software so if you want to get a more robust software like Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro then those are going to be the ones where you can add multiple layers and have a lot more to do. And that is it. That is how I add graphics inside iMovie. Now we just worked with pictures but the same exact thing works with specific graphics as well. And if you found any value in this video go ahead and hit that like button for me so that more people exactly like you are able to watch this. And if you're like me if you're way too busy to take care of that stuff on your own and you want to hire a professional professional. I do have some spots available for not only editing your videos, but I could also coach you on how you can edit these videos much faster as well. Feel free to reach out and we can work out a plan together on how to move forward with that. And leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Like I said, I answer each and every question that comes down there in the comment section. Now, some of you guys have been reaching out on different resources and I am working on a library of different effects and designs for you guys. So if you are interested in that, reach out to me by email or leave a comment down below. I would love to share that with you. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.